All right, so sitting next to me today is a 2022 Ford F-150 Tremor, and this is one of Ford's brand new trim levels for the F-150, and it came out alongside of the new Raptor. Today, I'm gonna to be walking you through the exterior, interior, and the driving of this vehicle. So starting on the exterior up front, there are some differences you'll see over other F-150s, especially the lower end trim levels, and that is you have this massive, orange colored strip going across the grill right here. And you also have these orange colored tow hooks down here. Now this one has the LED headlights and the LED turn signals. And the exterior of this color is finished in antimatter blue. Now on the hood, you also get these fake looking vents right here that I guess add a cool factor to the car, but they aren't functional whatsoever. Now coming over here, you do have these 18 inch rims right here that come on the Tremor. And of course your Tremor badge in orange-ish color and then another fake vent right here. Great job, Ford. And of course the mirrors have the cameras on them because this has the 360 parking cameras. You also get this massive steel running board right here just in case you need help getting up into the truck or anything like that. But on the outside, it's a lot of just classic F-150. Another massive Tremor badge in this like orangish brown color. And coming over to the bed, now, it is a good size, and of course Ford hooks you up with some stuff back here. Of course you have the classic Ford step that folds down that can help you get into the bed. You have a measurement ruler right here on the back and a good spot that you need um, if you need to work on it. This one actually came equipped with the two kilowatt outlet for Pro Power on board, um, which is an option that you can get on this vehicle. And this isn't the power boost either. This has the 3.5 liter EcoBoost engine. So you could still get that with the EcoBoost. Now, you also have these pretty decently sized exhaust, exhaust tips right here and two more tow hooks with, of course, all your trailer connections right here. Now, this can actually tow 10,900 pounds just in case you're interested in towing with your Tremor. But that's about it for the exterior of the vehicle, of course. You have your LED tail lights right here, but it's not much different than any of the other F-150s out there. The Raptor is definitely different. In fact, I haven't been able to find anything that goes over any suspension changes. I know this is a little taller than some of the other F-150s, but it's not as crazy as the Raptor is. Anyways, let's go over to the engine and talk about that 3.5 liter EcoBoost. All right, now as for the engine powering this Tremor right here, this is a 3.5 liter twin turbo V6. It makes 400 horsepower and 500 pound feet of torque, and it is mated to a 10 speed automatic transmission, which is the only transmission option for the F-150 lineup. Now, other engines you can get in the F-150 include a 3.3 liter gas, a 2.7 liter twin turbo V6, a five liter naturally aspirated V8, and a 3.5 liter hybrid V6. That's called the power boost. Um, but yes, this one is equipped with a 3.5 liter twin turbo V6. It, like I said, can tow 10,900 pounds. All right, so hopping onto the inside of the F-150 Tremor. This is a very standard interior of the F-150. You go with the upgraded models. So I'm just gonna make this quick. Of course, the same screen right here, running Sync 4. Of course, you have your dual zone climate control, heated and cooled seats. And of course, you have this cool gear selector that drops down and gets out of the way, but it's kind of pointless when this thing doesn't have the whole workspace that folds flat. In other F-150s, you can get a wireless charger. This one doesn't have it, but this one does have a USB type A and USB type C socket down there. Of course, your 12.3 inch gauge cluster in front of you. And this one has adaptive cruise control link keep assist. This actual one, since it has the 360 assist co-pilot prep package on it, it can be updated to have uh, Ford's blue cruise system, which is basically like Super Cruise or Tesla's autopilot, but for the highway where it just senses your eyes using an IR sensor and you could take your hands fully off the steering wheel and it'll basically drive itself on the highway. And I believe to upgrade to that, if you have the prep package, like this one does, it's about $600. But yes, I think I'd be doing that just because having my hands on the steering wheel at all times while, while I have adaptive cruise control on can be a little annoying. Of course, practicality in here, it's an F-150, so you get plenty of it. Glove box here, glove box there, and a nice and deep center console. Up here, you also have two, four, six cup holders, and then two more, four more in the back, and a bunch of other storage space up here, more connectivity ports right here. 
Six auxiliary switches. The Tremor's still an off-road F-150, just like the Raptor and the Bronco. So just like those cars, you do get six auxiliary switches. Now, this one is equipped with the 18-speaker Bang & Olufsen Unleashed Sound System. And if you know us from our past videos, we love audio and how it sounds. So, personal thoughts on the Bang & Olufsen. I've heard better, and I would have expected more out of Bang & Olufsen than this. It's not terrible, but it feels like a lot of your noise is coming from up here which kind of takes away from the surround sound feel of it. The Audi's Bang & Olufsen sound system, which was a 16 speaker, not a 19, or not an 18 speaker like this one is, the 16 speaker, that was the 3D premium sound system. It sounded better than this one does. So if you are thinking about going for the 18 speaker Bang & Olufsen Unleashed, just keep that in mind. Like I said, digital gauge cluster shows plenty of information, um, all your driver assistance features, and then you have nice, clear, and easy to read uh, gauges in there as well. Now, as for drive modes, this one does have drive modes like every other F-150. You have sport, eco, tow and haul, normal, slippery, uh, deep snow and sand, mud and ruts, and rock crawl. But I don't think this one is set up to do any kind of rock crawling. And of course, all your drivetrain modes down there, but that's basically it for up front. Uh, when it comes to materials, materials are nice in here. You do have some not cheap feeling plastics here. This is pretty actually pretty nice feeling, but you have some cheap feeling plastics here and down on the doors, but a lot of soft touch materials in vinyl and these seats are absolutely comfortable. And you also get the contrast orange stitching that matches the color of the badges on the outside, that orangish brown color that comes with the tremors and tremor embroidered into the seats right here. So that is pretty cool. All right, so back here, seats are comfortable and you get a decent amount of headroom if I sit all the way up. Yeah, my top of my head's touching it a little bit, but it's not terrible. Tons of leg room, like gosh, wow, about a foot of it actually, if your knees are, but if you're stretching out, still plenty of leg room back here. Good back seat pockets, uh, plenty of storage back here, like I said, one, two, three, four cup holders, and this is a nice comfortable armrest. Back here you have climate vents, no tri-zone climate control, but climate vents and heated seats, 12 volt socket, USB type A and USB type C, and a 120 volt outlet right here, just in case you need to charge any of your devices. But like I said, back here is just as comfortable and you get just as nice of materials back here. So I'm not disappointed with the interior of this vehicle. It actually feels like it's worth its price tag. All right, so driving the F-150 Tremor, and I've driven plenty of F-150s with this engine before. I can't see. All right, there we go. Glove box just opened. All right, I've driven plenty of F-150s with this engine before and this transmission. Um, and I got to be honest, I, I, it doesn't drive any different than most F-150s do. It has a little more body roll than I remember it having... And with these 18 inch rims, these tires have a really good amount of tire wall. So they soak up a decent amount of the bumps in the road. Of course, the steering is actually pretty light, almost too light, but it's nice and easy to use. Just like F-150s are, the technology in here is great. The seats are very, very comfortable. I feel like a lot of the great things in an F-150 come from the amount of practicality and technology they have in them, especially with this 14th generation F-150, the generation that came out in 2021. I just feel like they're, they are extremely, extremely loaded. Now, I'm going to activate cruise control right now, which means I'm going to basically press this button. Then that's cruise control on. And then I can also activate lane keeping assist by pressing this little truck emblem between two lanes. And now lane keep assist is on. And it should, there it goes. It starts to turn for me. And then it will be, get really mad. And I don't have my hands on the steering wheel. Hey, look, look. So this has the, like I said, the prep package for the Copilot 360, which means this little sensor right here reads your eyes just like the Mach-E has on its steering wheel. Oh, come on, my hands are on the steering wheel. Okay, just like the Mach-E has on its steering wheel, this F-150 has an IR sensor for your eyes. So if you get the $600 upgrade, which it should already come with that because this is $79,000, um, 
you can then remove your hands off the steering wheel and that IR sensor will read your eyes to make sure that you're watching the road. So if you're into that kind of thing and you want the ease that that car has, then absolutely go for it because I am so tired of it telling me to keep my hands on the steering wheel when my hands are on the steering wheel. Yep, they're on. Do you guys hear that? That's like so annoying. Watch the road. Oh my, okay. Yep. I have control. Okay. So yeah, the steering wheel thing, keeping your hands on it, I've always thought is a little finicky and it's finicky in every single car I drive. But with the IR sensor watching the road, it'll say watch the road to me, but most of the time it's fine. Um, it's just the steering wheel sensors in this thing suck. Absolute balls. And that's about it. That's the only complaint I really have with this and that the steering wheel is maybe a little too light. And body roll, like I said, can be a little annoying at higher speeds. But other than that, it uses that 400 horsepower and 500 pound-feet of torque very, very effectively. So, yeah, I've always liked the 3.5. The powertrain's good, drivetrain's good. And I don't actually foresee myself switching this out of normal mode very often. Of course, there is sport mode, but you're not really going to get any huge benefit out of that. It puts it in four-wheel automatic when you put it in the sport mode, which I'll do right now if anyone's interested in seeing that. It's in sport mode right now, switches it to four wheel auto. Well, the exhaust is definitely throatier. The F-150 is by no means slow. It's a very snappy truck and it can get up to speed very quickly, especially if you have the 3.5, the power boost or the V8, this thing hauls. Now, not with the 2.7. The 2.7 takes off pretty well and then kind of craps out on the top end. A lot in the 3.3 liter gas engine with nothing on it. Yeah, that's a piece of garbage. You don't want that. Get the 2.7, which you automatically get on higher trim levels. But get the 2.7 at least because the 3.3 is useless to you. And it will ruin your experience with the F-150 just in general. So, yeah. I really like the way this truck drives. I've always really liked F-150s over a lot of the other cars out there and other options. The Silverado and the Sierra just got refreshed. I saw a commercial about it yesterday. So I really want to drive those, but for right now, still the F-150 sits at the top of my list for um, you know, just a normal pickup truck. All right, and that is the 2022 F-150 Tremor. Now, what do I think of this car? I honestly like it. It's a step below the Raptor, it doesn't have all the upgrades, and it doesn't have that high output 3.5 liter V6. But the price is getting dangerously close to being what a Raptor would be. This one currently sits around $79,000. But for $79,000, I think I would just spring for the Raptor instead. Again, uh, you know, it's not going to be a fully specced out Raptor with the 37 Raptor package on it with the 37 inch tires, but you're already spending that much. You get more power with the Raptor, more off-road features, better suspension, and you get active exhaust on the Raptor as well. So I think for this price that this one sits at, just go for that 2022 Raptor, get a little more Baja and off-road performance out of it instead of getting the Tremor. Anyways, if you guys like the video, make sure you hit that like button down below. And if you want to see more from us, go ahead and subscribe. And I will see you all in the next video.